Hello and welcome to the Craft Beer Corner. For today's review, we are uh, jumping into yet again a couple more beers I got from Tavour. And this is a single brewer, single style, uh, a slight deviation, but we'll get there. Um, today we're going to be reviewing a couple different IPAs. One is a standard and one is a double. Both beers are brewed by Evil Twin Brewing Company based in Brooklyn, New York. So they call this public servant and it's a line of beers that they're brewing in honor of various uh, public servant professions. So the first one is called Teacher Edition, obviously to honor teachers. This is the standard IPA of the bunch, clocks in at 7%. And then for beer number two, this is the double IPA. This one is Firefighter Edition, so honoring firefighters, 9% ABV on this one. So we've got a couple IPAs from the same brewer that are in honor of various public servant professions, which I fully, fully support. And um, honestly, I love Evil Twin. Um, they're known for doing a lot of very interesting things with their beers. So these will be a couple of the tamest, most normal beers I've ever had from them. Uh, just a standard IPA and a standard double IPA. So I'm very excited to jump in and see what they do with just a basic classic standard beer. So without further ado, we're going to jump right in, starting with the Teacher Edition. This one clocks in at 7% ABV. Okay, starting off with the first beer of today's Evil Twin IPA review, we have got Teacher Edition. This is the standard IPA we're reviewing today, and it clocks in at 7% ABV. Now, in terms of label art, uh, this one is really kind of subdued. It's a nice kind of forest green color, and it uh, has um, a pyramid and ABC written on it. So obviously geometry and uh, grammar, spelling, whatever. Uh, on there, so making a nod to the teachers. Nonetheless, that's about all there is to talk about in terms of label art, so let's get this one cracked. Gently. All right. And pour it right in the glass. Oh, that's a lovely looking IPA. This is a nice bright yellow. This is looking very much like what I picture in my head when I think of an IPA. This is the shade that I picture. It's this very bright, light but not too light, not super ambery or orange in hue IPA. Okay, so visually that is very yellow and I can tell you as I was pouring this it looked like some sediment poured in so it's got taken on this kind of cloudy occluded look. Uh, which is just fine by me. I don't mind little hop and yeast particulates floating in my beer. It's just more flavor, but it looks great. Uh, formed a beautiful, beautiful creamy head. I can tell you the aroma on this is reasonably pronounced. If I get a little bit closer, I can start to smell it. I can't smell it from like a foot, foot and a half away like some beers, but it does have a really nice pronounced aroma. Head looks great. Beer looks great. Let's give it a deep sniff. Okay, that smells very, very hop forward. I can tell you uh, kind of the main aromas I'm picking up out of this one is a combination of earthy and floral and kind of tropical. Just the slightest suggestion of pine on the end, but I'm not really picking up any citrus vibe from this one. And yeah, yeah, not really. It's more tropical fruit, floral, earthy with just a hint of pine. It smells really, really nice. And uh, I couldn't find what hop variety that they used um, to make this beer, so I don't know. So I'm uh, kind of going into it with no expectation, but it looks great, it smells great, head is holding true, so let's uh, jump right in, give this a sip. Mm. Oh, it's a nice IPA, yeah. It's a nice IPA. It's not super pungent, but it tastes very fresh and it tastes very, very flavorful. So the hop aromas that I could pick up that smelled lovely, in terms of what it actually imparts into flavor in the beer, I would say it's dominant earthy. And while there wasn't that big of a um, kind of delineation between and, and presence of all the different kind of hop categories I described, I can tell you, even though I didn't really pick up any citrus on the aroma, there's a little hint of citrus on this. I would say it reminds me most closely of blood orange, maybe mixed with ruby red grapefruit, and it's really more rind in that kind of oil side than the actual flesh of the fruit itself. Um, I'm picking that up with uh, floral 
and uh, earthy. There is just what the, the slight suggestion of pine that I got on the aroma, it's kind of an equal part in the beer. There is just a slight suggestion of a pine kind of resinous quality to it, but overwhelmingly it uh, tastes much more like tropical fruit and a kind of um, earthy hop flavors with just a little bit of citrus on there. It tastes great. It's not super pungent. In terms of a uh, hop pungency and flavor and hop bitterness, it tastes great and it tastes very fresh, but it's not super pungent. So this is a beer that I think would be a bit more approachable for somebody that's just getting into IPAs. It's not super, super duper intense, either in terms of hop characteristic flavors or in terms of bitters, but it tastes great. I'm gonna jump back in um, for another sip here for body and mouthfeel and start to explore this finish. In terms of body, I'd say it's a very strong medium or light medium heavy. It's got a lot more presence and breadth to it than you would anticipate for 7% ABV. Uh, mouthfeel feels very classic IPA. It's got a little more viscosity than your average IPA and uh, kind of matches the heavier body that it's got. It's, it's thicker than your average IPA, but it definitely feels like a standard IPA just with a bit more thickness. And uh, if you start to agitate it around the palate, I can tell you it does get quite creamy, um, very, very silky, light, almost foam-like uh, in the way that it kind of creams up. In terms of the finish, this beer has a longer finish than I anticipated, uh, given the lack of complete in-your-face uh, pungency of flavor. It's it's very dialed back. It's it's very mellow. It's It's really just, to me, feels like an IPA that's all about tasting and smelling fresh and tasting and smelling great, which it does, but it's not super intense. That said, the flavors do linger a really good distance uh, and length on it um, on the end of each sip. There's a lot to still think about. In fact, uh, I don't know, it's probably been 30 seconds since I took the last sip, give or take. I can still taste those hops. So they may not have been super pungent, but boy, do they stick around. And really what I taste in the back is a combination of earthy and floral and just a hint still of the bitters lingering on the back of the palate. It's very, very nice. Overall, even though it's not uh, as pungent as many, many IPAs out there, I do think it's very well put together and God, I can't stress enough how fresh and just delicious it smells and tastes. I also think that it's very, very well balanced. They chose a good malt bill in my opinion because it's really letting the hops speak. If they had used a more malted or deeply roasted malt uh, kind of in their malt bill, maybe some ambers in there, some cara, any, any, anything of that type, I think that the malt would have overpowered the delicate nature of the hops and the intensity that they put in here. As if we're using this lighter malt bill, it's just really nice. So it tastes super clean, classic IPA, and just very bright and fresh. It's very, very enjoyable. I'm gonna jump in for one more sip for final thoughts here. Mm. Oh, it's just delicious. It's just delicious. It's an IPA that puts a smile on your face. How bright and fresh it tastes. And then you get those hops and they come through and you taste them all perfectly clearly. And it's not super intense, but it's enough that you can pick everything out. I'd say a scale of one to 10 of intensity. This is maybe hanging in the middle, low middle. So four to five, four and a half, somewhere in that range. So you get to taste them all, just as you smell them all. And it comes through and they all make their presence known quite clearly, all these beautiful flavor profiles. It's just not so in your face intense. It's a lovely, lovely beer. I'm a big fan. I really like this one. I'm gonna take my time sipping on this, come up with my scores. When we come back, we will get to the second beer of today's Evil Twin review. That is the Firefighter Edition, double IPA, clocking in at 9% ABV. Okay, now moving on to the second beer of today's Evil Twin Brewing Company IPA review. We have got Firefighter Edition. This is the double IPA or Imperial if you prefer, 9% uh, ABV on this one. Uh, just as with the last, it's got uh, some very basic kind of label artwork. And on this one, it's a fire extinguisher and a fire. But again, very clean design. 
That's about all uh, that's of note to mention. So let's get this cracked. All right, gently, beautiful, and poured right in the glass. Okay, I actually expected this to look quite a bit darker than the first, but this is looking nearly identical in terms of depth of color here. It's uh, forming maybe a bit more aggressive head, but that's okay. So I'm slowing down my pour here. All right, so that didn't quite get the whole can in, but that's all right. Uh, visually, yeah, this is just a shade darker than the first. It's uh, got a slightly deeper yellow hue to it, but overall it looks remarkably similar. Only notably this one does not look really occluded or cloudy at all. Um, it's got a cold beer, that's why my glass is fogged, but it's basically a clear beer. I can see effervescence coming up. It looks to be a pretty slow trickle and it's very, very fine champagne-like bubbles I can see coming up. Obviously, it formed just a beautiful lush creamy head here. Now, I can tell you I cannot smell this beer from the same distance I could from the prior. So I'm going to have to get up on here to give it a good sniff. Mmm. Yeah, it smells nice. It smells remarkably similar to the first, uh, with a couple notable exceptions. I'm definitely picking up citrus in this quite a bit stronger than the first beer. And again, it's reminding me of a mix of, say, ruby red, grapefruit, and blood orange, only it's less kind of citric oil, citrus oil, as the first one kind of smelled. This one smells much more like the actual flesh of the fruit to me. Uh, and in tandem, it's got the same kind of tropical fruit aromas and a little bit of floral. I'm not really picking up any earthy or pine in the aroma here. I'm not saying that won't be present in the flavor profile, but those are the three I smell. It smells very nice. Again, it smells very, very fresh, very hop forward. Even though you got to get right up in the beer and breathe deeply, what you do uh, get out of the aroma, it smells fantastic. So this head, I'm not going to break it down. It's a little higher than I normally jump in, but I'm going to do just that. So let's give it a dive. Mm. Oh, that's very tasty. Mm. That's quite a bit different than the first beer. It's quite a bit bigger. The flavors are a lot more intense in this one, no question about it. I mean, it's imperial. You kind of expect that, but imperial doesn't necessarily translate into hop pungency of flavor at all, any more than it does to the aroma. But the flavors are definitely a lot more pronounced. I can tell you, when you get this in your mouth, comparative to the aromas that you pick up, it does taste quite citrusy. I would say blood orange and grapefruit, ruby red grapefruit's a pretty good uh, spot on the money descriptor of the flavor that I'm getting. I'm getting that in tandem with just a hint of some tropical fruit. I don't know um, exactly what it tastes like, but it definitely tastes like exotic tropical fruit mixing with uh, citrus and just the slightest hint of floral. I'm not getting any earthy, I'm not getting any pine. So really the aromas that I picked up are translating directly into flavor in this beer. I'm just in varying quantities. In terms of length of finish, however, it's worth noting that this beer is not as long as the uh, standard IPA was. Um, it's not as bitter intensive, it's more hop flavor intensive, but there are fewer, better, uh, fewer bitters in this Imperial to be certain. And uh, in turn, it's not sticking around the back of the palate um, for quite the same length. So you're almost getting all of the intensity up front and it hangs around for about 10, 15 seconds and then it just kind of nosedives and it's almost indistinguishable. But what you taste is delicious and it's very, very clean. I'm gonna jump in for another sip and explore the body and mouthfeel, start to think about how these flavors develop. Body on this one's a true medium heavy. It might even have a little bit more robust body than I'd anticipate for the ABV. Mouthfeel, not dissimilar to the first, but it's a little bit thicker. 
And if the first one started to get silky, creamy, and thick and rich and rich and milkshake like when you agitate it around the palate, this is next level. It gets positively huge. Just the slightest bit of undulation around the palate, and it really starts to get creamy. Just ridiculously creamy. It's uh, got a very nice body and a very nice mouthfeel. The beer feel feels substantive uh, on the palate, no question about it. The flavors are really intense. And that intensity holds for about 10, 15 seconds. And then it starts kind of, it's slow, a little bit of a descent, and then it just nosedives and it just kind of plateaus and holds for a little bit before it's gone. But it's very, very good. It's very, very clean. I'll say the same thing about this one I said about the first, and I stand by this. Using this lighter malt bill, not going with the darker, more caramelized, uh, heavier roasted malts is a really, really good way to keep it out of the way and let the hops speak and do their thing in the beer. So yet again, it's got this nice light malt bill that is not overpowering. There's no caramel overtones coming through, drowning out any of the hops. The hops are speaking perfectly clearly. And uh, the, the malt bill that they chose for these two beers, I think they absolutely chose the right ones. Going with these lighter malts definitely lets the hops come through and it's fantastic. Uh, the balance of it is great because you do still get this nice classic bit of maltiness, but it's that light side. It doesn't overpower the hops and they just get to come through and it's so enjoyable that they do because this is really delicious. Again, I don't know the blend of hops in this one either, but whatever they chose, it's really, really good. I am a big, big fan. This is a very tasty beer indeed. I'm gonna jump in one more sip for final thoughts. Mm. It's just crazy how thick that beer gets when you roll it around the palate. Oh, it's such a bright, refreshing flavor. It comes through and it's so intense up front and it backs off a little bit, kind of holds and then kind of the dive as we've talked about a few times now, but it's just so good. This beer tastes so fresh and it's so hoppy. All of these nuances of the different hops are bringing all these different flavor profiles to the table. And indeed the aromas, because you can smell it when you're going in and we taste first with our nose. I've said that a million times and I'll keep saying it because it's true. This is just a really fantastic beer. Um, it may not be the most intense or bitter intense Imperial I've ever had, but what you do get in this beer is just an absolutely delicious, well thought out IPA, uh, Imperial. It's, it's got a really great flavor. The hops they chose really work well together. It is just absolutely fantastic. It's bright and crisp and refreshing. This would be a beer I would have no problem drinking on a hot summer day. You know, it may be 9%, it may be Imperial, double IPA, whatever you wanna call it, but it's absolutely that delicious and refreshing. It would really quench the thirst. I'm gonna take my time sipping on this one, come up with my scores, and when we come back, we will get both beers ranked from top to bottom. Okay, now that we've gotten to enjoy both of these beers, we're going to get them ranked, starting with the Evil Twins Teacher Edition. This was the standard IPA, 7% ABV on this one. Again, Evil Twin is based out of Brooklyn, New York. For the aroma, the aroma on this beer was nice. It, uh, you, it, it was pungent enough that you could smell it from a reasonable distance away. It wasn't one of those one, two feet away, but you could smell it you know, pretty strongly before getting right up on the glass. When you did, it just hit you with how hop forward and fresh this beer smelled. It was absolutely fantastic, well above average. It gets an eight out of 10. For the taste, I really enjoyed the taste on this beer. Um, honestly, it uh, wasn't as super pungent or hop or bitter forward as I was anticipating just based on the aroma. Um, but what did come through was absolutely delicious. The blend of hops that they put in here was very, very nice. They all paired well together. And keeping the malt bill, a nice light malt bill, let the hops come through, um, which for the amount of hopping that they did, being that it wasn't as intense as many, many IPAs, I think that was the right call. Overall, it was very enjoyable, well above average. It gets an eight out of 10. For the body, the body on this beer was surprisingly huge for just a 7% ABV. That's kind of mid, upper mid range for an IPA, but this body had real presence. It felt big and heavy and thick in the mouth. And uh, 
I really appreciated that. I, I like a big heavy beer, especially when we're talking IPAs and stouts and things like that. They are bigger beer styles. I really enjoyed it. It gets a perfect 10 out of 10. Mouthfeel, same story here. This had a lot more thickness and viscosity to it than your average IPA to be certain. It wasn't crazy. It was still within the norm, but it was much more akin to what you might get with an Imperial in terms of just the weight and the thickness that it had. I loved it. Gets a 10 out of 10 for the finish. Despite the fact that the overall, overall hop pungency wasn't really high tier, the length on each sip, the finish was very, very long and it was very clean. You got to pick out all of the individual hop flavors. They blended together, they held there, and then it did kind of drop off pretty quickly, but it just held. And that was impressive considering how not bitter forward this IPA was. I really was impressed. It gets a 10 out of 10. Head and retention, this beer did a great job, honestly. It poured fantastic. The head formed nice and true, nice creamy thick head, and it really had good staying power as well. It was only just shy of top tier status. I docked one point, it gets a nine out of 10. For the appearance, this appearance for me was IPA perfection. It's exactly what I think of in my head when I think of an IPA, that nice bright gold yellow color, perfect 10 out of 10. For the balance, the balance on this beer I thought was excellent, um, particularly in consideration for the balance between the malt bill and the hops. I think they got it right especially choosing the malt bill that they did. That said, I would have liked more hop pungency and certainly more bitters to come through, but uh, overall I did think it was well balanced. I only docked one point here, it gets a nine out of 10. For the feeling in the intangible, overall very strong beer. I really enjoyed it, it was an excellent IPA. For my personal preference, really the only thing I thought that it was lacking was more bitter pungency and more hop pungency. Don't get me wrong, it was a delicious beer, uh, but I just would have liked more hop presence. I docked two points here. It's above average though. It gets an eight out of 10. Finally, as an example of the style, this is a fantastic IPA. There's no question about that. I really enjoyed it. It was super bright, super fresh, and it was just absolutely delicious. For me, it really came down to a matter of pungency of the hops and pungency of the bitters. It wasn't quite there, but everything else was just absolutely spectacularly well done. I docked two points here, well above average, it gets an eight out of 10, which brings the total score on Evil Twins Teacher Edition to a 90 out of 100. So this is absolutely a well above average IPA offering and uh, one I definitely do think is worth your time seeking. Very enjoyable. Also worth noting, I think it's a more approachable IPA for somebody just getting into the styles. If you haven't developed an appreciation for hop flavors and bitters, um, this would be one that maybe won't scare you away that can help you get into the style. Uh, moving on to number two, this was the double IPA of the bunch, Firefighter Edition, 9% ABV on this one. Uh, for the aroma, the aroma on this one, I was kind of surprised. It was not pungent uh, really at all. Once you finally got down right up over the glass, you could smell it very clearly and it really did smell nice. But in terms of pungency, it was just average. It gets a five out of 10. For the taste, I really enjoyed the taste on this. It was a lot more pungent in terms of hop flavor and certainly in terms of bitters as well, which you don't always get in an Imperial. And yet again, I think the choice of the lighter malt bill was a really good decision here. It let what hops they did do come through and they were really delicious, the blend they put in. I wish I knew what it was because they worked beautifully together. I only docked one point, it gets a nine out of 10. For the body, same story as with the first beer, only it was even bigger on this one. It gets a perfect 10 out of 10. Mouthfeel, again, same story. It was just huge. It gets a perfect 10 out of 10. For the finish, I was kind of surprised at the length of the finish on each sip of this beer. This beer had a lot more hop presence. There were more bitters and there was a lot more intensity of flavor. However, the flavors dissipated quite a bit quicker than on the first beer. And indeed, overall, it was gone, you know, it, it was gone quicker than I anticipated for the intensity, at least perceived intensity that came through to me. It's just high end of average in terms of length. It gets a six out of 10. For the head and retention, 
Uh, this one did a great job. The first one was fantastic. This was even better. This poured even thicker, creamier, lusher, and it really stuck around the whole time. No hint of uh, dissipating until I was done with the beer. Perfect 10 out of 10. For the appearance, yet again, same stories with the first. This was maybe a bit deeper, richer, yellow hue, but it was perfectly in line for what I anticipate and what I absolutely love to see on an Imperial. It gets a 10 out of 10. For the balance, this beer was very, very, very well balanced. Again, really the only thing I could say was a little more hop intensity. I would have liked a little more aroma to come through, maybe a little dry hopping or extra dry hopping, and a little more bitters. But overall, the balance I thought was fantastic. It gets a nine out of 10. For the feeling and the intangible, same story here, and it's really all about the same reasons. I did appreciate that this was more intense than the first, but it still wasn't there for my money. Just a little more hop intensity, a little more bitter intensity, and would have gotten top marks. I docked one, it gets a nine out of 10. Finally, as an example of style, I did take some uh, decent points off on a few categories, notably the aroma and the finish. But overall, this beer was very, very well done, especially in terms of an Imperial. They're kind of a crapshoot. You never really know if you're gonna get a more caramel-laden malt bill that's gonna drown out the hops. This did not do that. It just a little more hop pungency for me would have given it top tier status. I dock one point, it gets a nine out of 10 which brings the total score on Evil Twins Firefighter Edition to an 87 out of 100. So another absolutely well above average top tier beer, only three points between the two. Um, frankly, both of these are great choices. If you like a little lighter IPA, the first one's probably uh, gonna be a good bet for you. If you like a little more intensity, a little more bitter pungency, this one's probably a good bet, but they were both fantastic and uh, as the first non kind of crazy thinking outside the box additive laden evil twins i was very impressed they can do just a standard beer with no gimmicks uh very very well indeed folks that's today's review as always i do sincerely appreciate you tuning in today please don't forget to like comment and subscribe and if you want to stay in the loop when our videos go live to youtube you just click the notification bell icon it's right next to the subscribe button until next time keep it beer keep it craft We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.